Hey guys, welcome back to the Calibrate Tools DIY channel. Today, we're gonna learn how to use a die grinder to open up those holes. Stick around, I'll see you right after this. All right guys, so this is a quarter inch straight die grinder. It's a pneumatic device. That means it's an air tool, and all that means is that it uses compressed air to operate. So yeah, you will need an air compressor, a separate device, to operate this. It's about seven inches long, about one and a half pounds heavy, and it clocks in about 20,000 RPMs. Now, if you're gonna use it with a regulator, you don't want your output pressure to be past 90 PSI, because 90 PSI is the maximum output pressure that this thing can handle. So if you go past that, you risk serious injury or this thing bursting apart. On the flip side, if you regulate the pressure under 90 PSI, it can severely reduce the performance of the tool. So you wanna have it at 90 PSI, nothing more, nothing less. It's pretty simple to operate. All you have to do is push up the safety bar, which is this right here, like that, and then squeeze the lever. A lot of tools nowadays have a safety mechanism like this one to prevent the trigger or lever from being engaged accidentally. So don't be surprised if you see it on other tools. Okay guys, in order to use this, you're gonna need some more accessories, okay? Something to put in the die grinder in order for it to grind. Those would be mounted points or quarter inch carbide burrs. Because once again, this is a quarter inch straight die grinder, okay? And they also have to be rated at or above 20,000 RPMs. So let's talk about some of the grinding stones or burrs that we have right here. They come in various shapes depending on what kind of application you need them for, right? Some are bigger, some are smaller, depending on the type of space you need to get into. You may need a smaller burr for more precise, uh, lighter pressure work versus a bigger, more sturdier burr that you need to remove material. For example, this is a cylinder shaped burr with an end cut. It just has a straight end cut on the end of it, okay? So you're probably just gonna use this side of the burr to take off material, okay? You're not gonna use this right here. As opposed to this one right here, which is also cylindrical, but it has a round head or a ball nose. So you're not only gonna be using the outside of this burr, but you're also gonna be using the tip of the burr to take off material or remove material. And you'll probably use this one if you're going down into something and you need to remove material on the inside of a hole, and the tip of it will also be removing material as well as opposed to the last burr, this one, where you're probably not gonna be using the tip of it to remove material. Then you have a cone-shaped burr with a round head on the tip versus a cone-shaped burr with a pointed tip. You have a ball burr and you have a smaller ball burr. So these are just a few examples of burrs that you would install in your die grinder to remove material. But they have other shapes and types of burrs out there, so you can do your research on that, depending on your situation. They have oval burrs, flame burrs, inverted cone burrs, all kinds of burrs. Okay, so how do you install your burr into your die grinder? Now you're gonna install your burr in here, right here. This is the spindle, the die grinder spindle. And back here, this is the collet nut. You're gonna have to tighten the collet nut onto the burr. But in order to do that, you're gonna have to hold the spindle in place, similar to any mechanical device or tool out there. In order to install something, you gotta hold the spindle in place so you can tighten it up. To help us do that, they provide these two devices here. This right here is a double-ended spanner wrench. This is an angled double-ended spanner wrench. So you're gonna take the angle wrench and place it onto the spindle, okay? You're gonna slide it onto the flat parts of the spindle. You see those flat parts there? Like that. And you're gonna take your burr, slide it in, and you're gonna use your other wrench with the smaller span to place it onto the collet nut, the flat parts of the collet nut. And you can twist to tighten it. Just twist to tighten. There you have it. To take the burr out, just simply place your spanner on the collet nut and twist in the opposite direction. Remember, anytime you're installing or removing an accessory like a burr, you always wanna disconnect this from any pressure lines or hose lines for safety. 
In this example, after connecting to a compressor and connecting the necessary hoses, I'm going to open up this hole wider to get a coupling to fit inside. I'm going to have to remove material with the die grinder to make that happen. Now the burrs can be used for woodworking, drilling, metal carving, engraving, polishing. Because the material I'm removing is metal, I'm using it for metal carving basically. I love pneumatic tools, I love ear tools. They're quick, convenient, and powerful. But you gotta be careful with them because all that compressed air can be very dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. So follow all the safety protocols when it comes to using ear tools. Read the instructions and follow them. All right guys, hit the like and subscribe button if you like the content. Leave a comment. Yeah, please leave a comment. We love comments around here. Don't forget to go to Calibrate.com and support the channel. We got some great products over there and also sign up for the email list. See you next time.